The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Leadership to Sustain the Transition to Standards-Based Grading. My name is Joe Granda, and I'm from TeacherEase. I'll be the host for today's webinar. Welcome to the TeacherEase webinar series. The series spotlights and shares best practices, success stories, and the latest research for standards-based learning community. But before we get started, I'd like to review a couple of logistics. All of the phone lines are on mute to prevent background noise from interfering with the webinar during the session. If you wish to communicate with the presenters or myself, please enter any question in the dialog box that you'll find on the right-hand side. We'll save your questions about the presentation for the end of the session. We'll have a, a full Q&A period at the end. The duration of the presentation is expected to be about 45 minutes, and then we'll have the Q&A. And after the webinar, we will provide a link to the recording of today's presentation. Now let's kick off the webinar, Leadership to Sustain the Transition to Standards-Based Grading. Let's start with the poll. I want to see where are folks in terms of standards-based grading. So let me do that here. And you should see a poll and if you could, where does your school district use standards-based grading? Put in your votes. I would love to hear what you're doing. Are, have you implemented standards-based grading? Are you in the process? You've committed to standards-based grading and now you're, you're implementing it or you're just starting the research process or you're here today because you haven't. You're, you're not doing it, but you're here to learn. So if you can put in your put in your uh, scores here, we're getting we're getting some answers. I I'm not surprised by what I'm seeing so far. I'm gonna close the poll in about 20 seconds. So hit that button. Don't forget to hit the submit button. Submit button on the bottom right hand side. Okay. I'm going to close this poll. Okay. Now, let's see. What did what did we all say on this? So the the poll says that 40% of you have started the process, right? You're you're in it, you committed, you love it, but uh, you're working on it. And then 23% are already full on into, into standards-based grading. Um, and then we've got the rest of you that are, that are learning. So, so pretty good. About two thirds are in it or, or uh, are working on putting it together. Very interesting. All right. So let's, let's meet our speakers. I'm proud to introduce Tim Westerberg. He served as a high school principal for 26 years. Prior to entering school administration, Dr. Westerberg taught social studies and coached at the high school level in Illinois and Iowa. He's author of three books, Creating the High Schools of Our Choice, Becoming a Great High School, and what we're going to hear about today is charting a course to standards-based grading. Tim is now a school improvement coach to help schools go from good to great. We also have on the line today, Mike Lencioni from TeacherEase. Mike's a former teacher like many of you. He also has a master's of science in data-driven education from Johns Hopkins. Mike is a system engineer for TeacherEase. Now we have a great webinar session for you. Again, a reminder, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate, put your questions on the, in the dialog box on the right hand side and we will answer them at the end. So with that, please join me and welcome to Tim. It's all yours, Tim. Thanks, Joe, and good morning, everyone. Um, you'll see on the right hand side of your slide, um, the book that uh, we're going to talk about uh, briefly here uh, today. And I'd like to draw your attention to the title, Charting a Course to Standards-Based Grading. 
the reason that I chose that title is uh, uh, stems from my experiences working with schools around the country. Every place, everywhere I go, people want to move towards best practices in classroom assessment and grading. There isn't anybody that I talk to that says, no, we're not interested in, in doing a good job in that area. However, um, schools get a little bit frightened by the prospect of having to go to the same destination, the same place, the same structure on the same timeline with all other schools. Schools seem to want, not seem to want, they definitely want to be able to chart their own course based on the contextual factors that they're working with, resources, other district initiatives, um, both human and financial resources, by the way. Um, what else is going on in the district, their particular community values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No two districts or schools are exactly the same. So um, people like the idea of moving down this path, if you will, towards different destinations, choosing when to stop, which destination to choose, uh, and when um, at their own calling or own pace. Uh, Joe, next slide, please. This slide then just gives you a brief description of what those destinations are. And we're gonna be um, talking about the leadership responsibilities, support responsibilities that go along with those destinations. As you can quickly see there, the first destination is really just tightening up traditional approaches to classroom assessment and grading. It's going from everybody doing their own thing to some common guidelines, beliefs, understandings, perhaps policies and practices. Um, across the school or perhaps across different levels, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, destination two is when we really get into standards-based grading. That's the title most of us uh, use or the handle most of us use. I actually prefer standards-based learning because it's a lot, it's about a lot more than just changing the grading system and changing the report card. It changes very significantly teaching and learning in the classroom. But in destination two, um, schools or districts have made the decision to, to move towards standards-based grading and standards-based learning. And that is where the um, infrastructure, if you will, of standards-based grading is developed. We'll talk about that a, a little bit more in just a moment. Um, destination two does not really change the report card. Destination three does. Uh, in destination three, um, not only are teaching and assessment in the classroom uh, different, but they also, uh, we also report out um, using either just standards or um, clusters of standards, strands, um, and in some cases, actually most cases at the secondary level, a combination of standards and letter grades. And then finally, destination four is for those who wanna to move to competency-based education, uh, building on the structure that was developed in Destination 2, um, move to competency-based education where students can, um, under the guidance of expert teachers, can move through the standards, through the assessments, through uh, the instructional activities um, at their own pace. So those are the different, different destinations. And many schools uh, right now that I work with are um, in destination one and destination two, some in three, and not so many in four. Uh, Joe, next slide. And these are the topics, again, um, with regard to the book charting uh, a course to standards-based grading, uh, we're only talking about one section of it today, today's topic, leader and leadership and support for the transition of uh, to standards-based grading. So um, half a dozen topics here that we'll touch on. Um, standards-based um, standards uh, training, um, and I'll talk about each of these in more detail, but basically there's, there's a lot of training that needs to go on um, before schools or districts can implement uh, standards-based grading and standards-based learning. Um, leadership needs to support that training. Uh, leadership needs to provide time for people to do the work. And that cannot be done at 45-minute uh, PLC meetings after school once a week. Uh, significant amounts of time need to be set aside to develop the structure and provide the training uh, for implementation. Technical assistance. We shouldn't just assume, for example, that uh, all teachers know how to develop um, 
uh, effective scoring scales or proficiency rubrics or that all teachers uh, have uh, sufficient training uh, in writing reliable, uh, valid and reliable assessments. So um, one of the, um, among the leadership and support tasks uh, uh, is providing that technical assistance. Uh, software is very important. And we're gonna talk um, more about that also in just a moment. Um, outreach assistance, um, particularly teachers, um, this is particularly true for teachers, they don't like being caught in the grocery store by parents asking them questions for which they aren't readily prepared to answer. They don't like feeling embarrassed. They, they like to be in the know. And so uh, part of the leadership and support menu is to provide um, particularly teachers uh, with the information they need to be able to communicate effectively to the public and not feel foolish. Um, input, uh, teachers um, in particular, but parents also and community members want to know when they're gonna get a chance to be involved in monitoring the effectiveness and suggesting modifications to the system of standards-based grading, standards-based learning that's being implemented. And then finally, accountability and individualized handholding, what gets talked about gets done and we'll explain some strategies for that in a moment. Take it away, Joe, next slide. So that first category, the training, standards-based learning, standards-based grading training. I've listed some um, areas here in which training uh, typically needs to uh, be conducted. Um, teachers need to, uh, for example, have some time to explore um, the counterproductive practices that are typically part of traditional grading practices in schools today. Um, counterproductive practices is a term um, coined by, uh, at least as far as I know, Ken O'Connor, and he's an excellent source of information um, on those counterproductive practices, as is Tom Gusty, Doug Reeves, Bob Marzano, and others. Um, but they're, they're, they're practices that are typically, we typically find in traditional grading practices that teachers and parents and students just take for granted and don't even question. So it's important for teachers to examine uh, those counterproductive practices because it begins to establish the foundation for why are we talking about standards-based grading? What's wrong with the way we've always done it? Um, another area for, for training is um, to examine uh, and develop underlying assumptions, that is assumptions that underlie the move to standards-based learning. Uh, assumptions such as students should have more than one opportunity to show what they know and can do, uh, such as a student's final standard score should reflect performance at the end of instruction, not an average of performance during instruction. Assumptions such as students should not be penalized for errors made during the learning process, the whole formative assessment piece. Um, homework is for practice and preparation, not for accountability. Percentage scores tell us little about the cognitive level of, student of a student's performance. Um, and assumptions such as commingling academic performance and work ethic erodes assessment validity. Um, so those are some underlying assumptions. Teachers need time to digest those, talk about those. Um, teachers need time to examine the research. What is the research on best practices in classroom assessment and grading? Um, teachers and others, parents as well, uh, need to know um, the purpose. Why are we making this move? Why this, why now? What's the moral imp imperative? What's in it for kids? Uh, teachers need training, particularly teachers and, and others, need training in the essential components or structure of standards-based learning, and they need lots and lots of examples. So by essential components and structures, I'm referring to scoring scales, aligned formative and summative assessments, aligned instructional strategies and resources, and how that all fits together. And let me see some examples in biology, in fourth grade, science in seventh grade social studies. Uh, they need to see lots of examples. And then teachers, a part of the training, teachers in particular, but also again, parents and administrators, um, love to hear stories from schools, um, why they've made the move to standards-based grading learning, what challenges they encountered, the processes they used, and how's it going. Next slide, please. 
Time is another of the factors that leadership uh, needs to support. And, and um, there's a, there, on the screen, you see some examples of um, why time is so important. Time for what? Um, professional development is a, is a category that, that administrators or leadership, not just administrators, need to provide for the transition to standards-based learning. Um, and some examples, and you'll, you'll, you'll note some overlap with what I've just talked about on the previous slide, but what kind of professional development do we need to provide time for? For example, um, time for professional development on best practices research, um, time uh, for professional development on identifying and deconstructing priority standards, of looking at cognitive demand, instructional rigor, um, time to develop scoring scales um, that, that, that align with the standards or topics that are identified for a particular grade level or course. Time for constructing professional development on constructing valid, reliable, and aligned assessment tasks. Um, teachers will need time for professional development on aligned instructional strategies and resources, on organizing learning in the standards-based learning classroom, on using software. So um, time is an important leadership function, finding the time to do it right. Um, teachers will need time for unpacking standards. Um, teachers will need time to identify uh, either measurement topics, to use a Marzano uh, term, or uh, um, priority or power standards. Um, teachers will need time to create scoring scales, uh, to develop assessments, to identify instruction, and to uh, explore, play around with, get comfortable with software applications. Again, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Next slide, Joe. Technical assistance, wow. Um, there's a lot of, of learning, of second, second order learning going on in the move to destination two and beyond, um, the move to standards-based grading and learning. And what are some of those, um, and, and teachers will, need, and administrators need to provide teachers and others, leadership needs to provide teachers and others with the technical assistance, with the know-how, for example, um, most teachers and administrators do not really know where to start in developing scoring scales. Um, sometimes I call them proficiency rubrics. Um, and just to make sure that we're all on the same page here, um, Joe, if you can go to the next slide, there's an example of a scoring scale from Marzano's work. And this one has for grade four, and it is on a standard or topic that has to do with the structure and function of cells and organisms. Level score three um, identifies in the Marzano scheme and in the Westerberg scheme, identifies um, what students need to show you they know and can do in order for you to be convinced that they've met the standard. They're at grade level, they, they're where they need to be on that standard. And you can see, there's a fair amount of um, or degree of sp specification identified uh, in this scoring scale. And no matter which fourth grade teacher the student has in the building or across the district, in the, for the standard addressing the structure and function of cells and organisms, these are the things that students need to demonstrate to be considered proficient or on grade level. And if you look at the bottom, um, square there or rectangle, you'll see um, that there are some um, uh, building blocks, some lower level cognitive development, lower level cognitive functioning, uh, things that students need to know um, or be able to do in order to move to the level three proficient level. And Joe, next slide, just in a secondary example of a scoring scale. Uh, this is for an algebra uh, class. Uh, the overall unit is expressions, equations, and inequalities. And there are a couple of learning goals in this unit, but one of them is just titled expressions. And again, if you look at the proficient level three, you can see there are four things, if you will, four tasks, there are four learnings that students need to um, convince you they know and can do in order for you to um, feel that they're proficient, they're where they need to be 
for this goal in this unit. And below that at level two, you see some building blocks um, that lead to the level three proficient. And then finally, for those students who need to be stretched, for those students who are capable and should be pushed to go beyond just proficient or meeting the expectation, um, you can see um, that they're um, involved in well, creating a real life situation. So next slide, please, Joe. So a technical assistance on developing scoring scales, which are the bedrock foundation of standards-based grading is an important component, uh, or train, uh, assistance that, that leadership needs to provide. Um, technical assistance on how to develop valid and reliable assessments, and also parallel assessment tasks. One of the underlying assumptions of standards-based learning is that students should have more than one opportunity to demonstrate um, proficiency which means you may have to have, probably will have to have more than one set of assessment tasks for a particular standard tied to the descriptors for the scoring scale on that standard or topic. And teachers need some help, I've found, in developing those assessment tasks. Um, cognitive demand, um, um, sometimes we, oftentimes I use the uh, Webb's DOK levels, depth of knowledge levels instrument to look at cognitive demand to make sure that we're pushing kids beyond just the kind of knowledge recall stages and actually pushing them to higher levels of cognitive demand thinking. Um, and related to that, higher order thinking skills, teachers seem to struggle and need technical assistance in how to develop, how to teach higher order thinking skills, but even more challenging for teachers seems to be how to develop assessment tasks that get at higher order thinking skills higher DOK levels. Um, leadership needs to provide that technical assistance. Um, effective feedback, as you all probably know, not all feedback is effective. Um, there are certain characteristics of feedback that tend to produce learning um, changes and improvements in, in student learning better than others. Um, teachers need to know that because a very big part of standards-based learning is frequent effective feedback. Um, methods of calculating grades, um, there are different methods that can be used beside, that is to calculate grades or final scores for a particular standard or topic, such as the structure and function of cells and organisms. Um, and uh, you see some listed there, power law, decaying weight. Um, methods of calculating uh, final scores for a particular standard or topic, uh, instead of averaging, um, and so the, those the teachers will need assistance from and support from administrators in understanding those different uh, methods. Available resources. There's a lot of there a lot of there's a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, sample assessments and units and scoring scales um, that uh, that have been developed by schools and other and organizations, uh, private and public. Uh, teachers will need some technical assistance on where can I go to find examples of. X, Y, and Z. And then finally, what we're going to talk about right now, and I guess uh, we'll go to the next slide, Joe. Um, leadership needs to provide um, teachers and students and parents with compatible, standards-based learning compatible software. I have seen uh, many um, initiatives, standards-based learning initiatives, run into trouble because the software, the system that the um, school was using was not really compatible with the school's standards-based learning design. And that meant they had to either um, sacrifice some of the um, practices that they wanted to plan to use or some of the design qualities, or they had to do workarounds. And that gives me, gets me to the other little piece um, the software needs to be teacher friendly. I've seen standards-based learning and standards-based grading poisoned, the well poisoned um, by software uh, packages that make it just too darn time consuming and um, difficult for teachers and it, it poisons the well for the whole project. Uh, Joe and Mike, you wanna talk a little bit about teacher ease as, we, as it relates to com compatible software? I sure do, Tim. Thanks. Thanks for the intro, and uh, couldn't agree with you more. I mean, the one thing that, that we see is we, we do re recommend that you don't settle for a generic tool that you might get with the SIS 
or Google Docs and spreadsheets and good old paper and pencil because the workarounds do do frustrate people uh, and, and do make it make a lot of unnecessary stress. So I totally agree with you on that. And what we want to make sure that you're that you do have a system that's simple and easy for your teachers, but also easy for your administrators. And it would, wouldn't it be great to be simple and easy for your uh, students and the parents. So what I want to do now is I've got another poll. I'd lo I love love listening to the audience here. I'm going to launch a poll and I'm curious, what is it that you use to track things? So if you could put in what are the current tools that you're using to track standards-based gra grading? So is it is it Excel spreadsheets and Google Docs? Is it uh, is it your generic sys? Do you have your own grade book? You know, where you're not using anything. I'm seeing a trend. So let's see here. Give it a give it another thirty seconds. Okay, that, don't forget that submit button on the bottom right hand side. It looks like we've leveled off. So I'm going to say close and I'm going to share. And what I saw here, not a surprise, over half of you said that you're using your SIS system out there, the grade book that comes with it. Uh, and then the next one is Excel or Google Sheets. But some of you also have an LMS or, or a grade book, and a big chunk of you don't have any. So um, no surprises here. Uh, it's the stuff that we hear all the time. So very interesting. Very interesting. So now you know what everybody else is using on your end. So I'm going to go back to the slides. And... The one thing I want to share with you is now that you've the school districts, you know, are using the SISs. You can see majority of you are using the SIS, but those systems are, they're designed to be assignment centric rather than standard centric. This serves the majority of their customers who are doing traditional grading. They're not doing standards based grading. Therefore, as Tim talked about, they're workarounds that just don't always follow the true standards based grading best practices that that you want to use within your your school within your community so for example proficiency skills they might be buried in the tabs on the on the sys but probably a bigger issue is do they properly calculate the proficiency scores a lot of times they'll do it using averages with a cut score but that doesn't take into account the the complexity of of the exam itself the assessment itself Another complaint that we hear is they don't do a great job of communicating student mastery progress of standards to the families in, in, their, fam in their portals because, again, they're focused in on assignments. They also just don't facilitate dynamic groups for differentiated instruction for, for a particular standard. And the last piece that we've heard from people is they struggle to support standards-based report cards or they require really expensive report card projects. That's not what we want, right? So what, what we have here, Teacher Ease, is we tackle those challenges head on with software for standards-based learning. We offer a comprehensive platform from learning targets and rubrics all the way through to the gray book and report cards for standards-based grading. So with that, what I'd like to do is hand it over to Mike Lencioni. He's gonna provide a brief demo highlighting just a small portion of these capabilities. So. Uh, I'm going to hand this off to you, Mike, and, and then you can take it away. So give me a quick second as I... Thanks, Joe. And as you kind of transition over the, uh, the screen sharing here, um, I'll just outline a little bit about what we're going to talk about. We're going to do the, basically the penny tour today. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so there's a lot of features and benefits that we won't cover. So I'd encourage you to reach out to us if there's more, if you'd like to get some more information. Um, so I'm going to show you the highlights from the instructor side, the parent student portal, and then the admin side. 
So starting with the instructor side, we'll jump right into the uh, grade book here. And so what we see is we've got students on the side, assignments are across the top, and scores in the middle. You'll notice that all of my assignments are nested under these higher levels here, and those are my standards. Now in terms of standards, we've got Common Core, state standards from the different states, NGSS, and a bunch of others preloaded into the system, but you can of course always import your own or build your own right within the system. So I'll go ahead and create a quick, a quick assignment. We'll just call this sample. And then I can choose as many or as few learning targets as I'd like. You'll notice again, lots of options we're not gonna cover. Um, just know that there's a lot we can do. So from here, I'll click save, and you'll see it'll push right into the grade book. From there, I can go ahead and start scoring. So I'll just enter some scores. We can do both letters or uh, numerical scores depending on your grading skill. And you'll notice that my assignment is listed once here under this standard and once again over here. So it's gonna show up one time for each standard to which it's assigned. Now when it comes time to score this assignment for this standard, I can jump in the gradebook again and enter scores or I can click on the assignment and view it more holistically. If the majority of my students scored the same thing, I can mass enter scores and then make any changes that are necessary. And right from there, click Save. Now, if a student scored particularly well, I can send an email to the parents and that student right from their gradebook. It's going to preload the email addresses and then pre-fill out the body of the email with the information from that particular assignment. And we can send it right off, keeping everybody informed, keeping everyone engaged. Okay. And then when it comes time for me to form my dynamic groups, I can resort the gradebook by score, either on an assignment or on a standard. So I can really see who those students are at each level. And I can create new assignments that are leveled for those students and assigned only to the specific students. So I could create an assignment just for the students at level two or the students at one in level two um, and really focus my differentiated instruction with them. Okay, now that's all I'm gonna show you from the instructor side. Um, again, there's a lot more. I'd encourage you to reach out if you'd like some more information. But now we're gonna dive into the parent and student portal and I'm gonna tunnel right in. This is something the instructors can do. And you'll see it's a very familiar, very similar layout to the instructor. We'll dive right into their grades page. We'll see our classes with our scores right there and any missing work that the students have done on the bottom. From there, I can click right into the class and see the targets that are available for that class. Now, by default, we're only gonna show the targets that have been scored up to that point in the year. We find that this is really the best way to keep from overwhelming the parents so that way we keep them engaged throughout the process. And then they have the ability to click into any of these standards and see all the assignments that make up that score. And they can even run a trend line to see how the students are doing over time. The same trend line, by the way, is available on the uh, instructor side as well. And then the only other thing I wanna to touch on on the parent side and student side uh, is the ability for them to see the report cards. You have the option to publish these digitally on the parent and student portal, so you don't have to print them off every time. Okay? Just another option. And then from here, I'm gonna hop over to the admin side. You'll notice it looks a little different. We'll take a quick peek at our report card builder. So hop in here. You'll see I picked a student as a sample. Brings up this really nice WYSIWYG editor. Makes it super easy to move things around. I choose from the different options. It'll update, create a new report card for me. Makes it really simple. Lots of different choices in here, especially around the different uh, standards you want to show at different times throughout the year. You know, whether you want to show all of them, only your top level or strand standards, or only the ones that have been covered. We've got options for all that different stuff. Lots of great samples on the public side as well, okay? And then the last thing I wanna show on the admin side is our reporting engine. With standards-based grading, you have the opportunity to have a lot of really great data, and so we wanna give you the ability to use that. So I can go ahead and run a histogram for all my students on a particular standard or on a group of standards and see where they break down, see how they're doing on that particular standard. So I can monitor their growth as they move. What makes this really powerful is the ability to break it down further by subgroups, whether that be by section or school. Here I'm using it for students with IEPs and students without IEPs, so I can ensure that we're meeting every student at their level, meeting every student's needs, and that those students who have IEPs are progressing at the same rate. Okay. And then the other report I wanna show you is the percentage of students above a threshold over time. So I'm gonna choose my score threshold here, which is two, uh, run it for this standard, and I'm gonna see how those students are doing over time on that particular standard. Now, hopefully all of your standards grow up into the right like this over time, showing that students are working towards mastery. But where this really becomes powerful is when it's more flat and they're not showing that growth, 
Uh, you have the ability to break this down with those subgroups and find those students who need a little bit more support. Okay, that's really all I have. Uh, again, the Penny Tour. The last thing I just want to point out is our public site. I'd encourage you to go here. Lots of great information on the solutions we offer um, and the different things we have available. And then finally, we have a what standards-based grading page available there as well with a little video uh, and just a guide that's really great for outlining for parents and staff um, as you make this tr transition, what standards-based grading is and what some of the best practices are. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Tim. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, so, um, couldn't, um, couldn't overemphasize the uh, leadership responsibilities in investigating and choosing, selecting, and implementing software that facilitates the design of the standards-based learning system you wish to implement in your district, but also um, to make it uh, not burdensome for teachers because that can just uh, scuttle the whole the whole ship, the whole project. Um, I think about a, a fifth or so category here in the leadership um, responsibilities um, and support um, for the transition standards-based gradings, what I'm calling um, uh, outreach assistance. Um, both internal audiences, particularly teachers, students, administrators, and external audiences, um, uh, parents and other community members, um, need um, to know some things and some of those things I'm so I'm calling that outreach and it's, those things might include the purpose the moral imperative the why are we moving to standards-based grading and why now how does it fit into our overall um, district or school improvement plan or initiatives um, why this now what's the purpose it needs to be something other than this is this is a hot topic around the country that that doesn't convince parents or teachers very often. Talking points, um, particularly teachers and administrators often feel comforted by having some um, talking points um, that they can, they can use to address questions that they get from students and parents and others, but primarily from students and parents. And I've actually seen some uh, schools and districts that'll even do a little role play um, they'll have someone uh, assume the role of a parent who is a bit of a, a skeptic about this new uh, grading system and will um, come to their come to a teacher, a person who's playing a teacher role um, with their questions and a little bit of a grilling and the whole audience uh, gets to kind of uh, live through that um, discussion, that conversation and sort of identify how would I answer that or what is the answer? Ooh, I, I haven't thought about that part. Um, frequently asked questions, um, you can imagine what those are. Uh, those are, many of those are identified in, in my book, but um, parents, teachers, and others will want to know uh, answers to things such as, um, how does this, how do universities, what do universities think about this? Will this, uh, will this have a negative or positive impact on my child's um, ability to get into the college of his or her choice? Um, who else has done this? How have they done? Has, is there evidence of um, student increased learning? Um, what's the research say about standards-based grading? And, and the bottom line for parents in particular, in terms of these frequently asked questions for which leadership needs to develop responses to and, and legitimate and honest responses is how will this affect my kid? My students are already performing pretty well under the traditional system. Why should I be enthused about this new system? Um, the elevator speech, um, what do you say? And maybe I really should call this the grocery store or post office speech, but what do you say to the parent who nails you in between the frozen pizza and the frozen ice cream at the grocery store and says, what's going on at the school um, with this goofy grading system? I don't understand any of what, what is it about and why are you doing it? Uh, of course, teachers and others in the school um, have every right to free speech. They can say whatever they want. But oftentimes, teachers are comforted by having almost having rehearsed a response to that question um, that puts them at ease. I think every school or district that's moving to implement standards-based learning should have at least one go-to expert, that person to which any teacher 
um, administrator, um, custodian um, can go to when they get stuck uh, uh, with regard to a question or a problem that they, um, that they can't, they're not prepared to answer or address. Um, website resources, um, once again, uh, there are lots of resources out there that can be available to assist uh, teachers and others in implementation. And then finally, I suggest that all of this be, all of this and more, be put in a, uh, put together in a, a district um, communication plan regarding standards-based grading. So outreach assistance. One more slide or the next slide, Joe. Leadership needs to provide both internal and external audiences um, with some information regarding it, what I'm calling here input. Um, parents, teachers, school board members, um, the town council, I don't know. People wanna know what's the process being used to implement or explore and then implement standards-based grading, standards-based learning in this district. How is it going to unfold? Within that process, what and where are my opportunities to weigh in? Um, when will you hear from parents? When in the process will you hear from students? When will you, um, when will teachers have an opportunity to talk about um, how it's going or what we think about the design as it's being um, developed? Um, what's the timeline? I mean, are we moving to full implementation next semester, next year, five years from now? And by the way, I certainly recommend it's not next semester and it's not next year, unless you've already done a lot of work with destinations one and two. Uh, but what is the timeline and who will make important decisions? Is that will implementation and, and development and input decisions be made by the superintendent? Is there a, a grading committee that's going to make decisions? Um, school board, uh, superintendent, yeah, who's leadership, the leadership team, who are the decision makers? And if there are advisory committees established, let's say for example, um, a parent advisory committee, it's important to let them know up front that they are advisory, not decision makers, so that no one feels betrayed later on in the process. Uh, formative assessment points, when will we have an opportunity to evaluate how it's going? Um, we're not going to wait five years and then find out there's some parts of it that haven't that are not working well for kids, teachers, and parents. So when are we going to stop and do some dip sticking regarding the implementation plan and process? And by what criteria will the initiative be evaluated? What are our our points related to the purpose of the initiative, standards-based grading, standards-based learning? What are the evaluation criteria that we're going to look at along the way to determine if we are accomplishing what we set out to accomplish? And when will there be opportunities each semester at the end of each year? When in the timeline will there be opportunities for revisions based on that formative assessment? And one more slide or next slide, Joe. Finally, um, in terms of leadership responsibilities and support for implementation, um, individual handholding and accountability. I once uh, worked in a district where the standards-based grading initiative was led entirely, led and managed entirely by central office staff. Principals were not really involved. Uh, they weren't, they had minimal training, they had uh, minimal accountability for implementation. Bottom line is in the buildings in that district, the initiative, standards-based grading, the move, the transition, never really got talked about. And what doesn't get talked about usually doesn't get implemented. So in terms of, of, of supporting teachers, particularly teachers along the way, um, and holding uh, teachers and administrators accountability, accountable for implementing standards-based learning with fidelity, um, what gets talked about gets implemented. So is standards-based grading, standards-based learning a topic at faculty meetings? Is it what gets talked about, or at least part of what gets talked about in evaluation conferences? Are evaluators sitting down with teachers and saying, how's it going? What are you struggling with? That's the handholding part. Um, show me what you're doing with regard to some aspect of standard. Show me the scoring scales that you're using right now and the assessments that go along with them. Um, 
having the conversation, informal hallway conversation, stopping somebody in the hall that you previously, that is leadership, stopping someone in the hallway that um, you had a previous conversation, perhaps asking, how's your new homework policy working? I know you were struggling with that when we last talked. What's, what's, what's happening? Um, is um, standards-based grading, standards-based learning, a focus of professional development planning in the school or district? Um, is um, standards-based grading um, a point of discussion um, and even decision-making um, when hiring a new staff, when developing the budget? Um, and is it a focus of professional learning community or department or grade level meetings? It has to be on the table all the time or it doesn't get implemented with fidelity. So, next slide. Now that we've had this, um, let's see, 47 minutes of conversation about standards-based learning and the leadership needed to um, work the transition, are we there yet? And obviously, no, we're not there yet. Um, as this one of my favorite cartoons says, stop asking me if we're almost there, we're nomads for crying out loud. And to some extent, we are nomads um, in this uh, path. Uh, this course to standards-based grading or best practices in classroom assessment um, and grading. Um, but hopefully today has uh, helped us move a bit further down that path. Uh, Joe, you want to go to questions? I definitely do. Thank you so much, Tim. And thank you, Mike. I mean, both of you have shared quite a bit of insight. It, what I love about, about the material that's been covered, it's so practical. So uh, and it's a big topic but you brought things to us that bring it to a, a natural way for us to integrate in our everyday lives. So I really appreciate all of the insights. This slide here, we've got your contact information for Tim, as well as for, for Mike and I. So feel free, by the way, there's a, if you wanna download the handouts, one of those handouts has our contact details there. Uh, feel free to contact us. With that, what I'd like to do is we've got about 10 minutes to take your questions. I've got a handful of questions that are in already. So uh, with that, I'd like to, to start off the Q&A process. But again, on the bottom right-hand side, there's a little question box. Feel free to, to throw in your questions. Okay, so the first question I have, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw myself up out there, so. People can see me as I ask questions, and if, if Tim and Mike, if you want to do the same. Um, the first question I have here, and I'm going to throw this to both Mike as well as if you, Tim, if you could start this one, is do you know of any Michigan or Midwestern schools that are being successful K through 12 with competency-based teaching and grading? And I happen to know that in Iowa, Competency-based grading is popular. It's not Michigan, but Tim, you know you're you're an Iowa boy. Uh, can you tell me uh, tell me what your experience is? Well, um, yeah, I guess um, I'm assuming if that question is referring to my destination for the competency-based learning. So that answer is is a different answer than if you'd asked about uh, schools who are either into or moving towards standards-based grading, standards-based learning destinations two, three. Um, I wonder what the best way for me to get this to people uh, is, uh, Joe or Mike. I do have a list that I have been developing over recent months of schools who have moved to uh, competency-based um, learning, but I don't have that in front of me right now. So the answer is yes, but I can't just recall immediately which Midwestern or Michigan schools are doing that uh, competency-based learning. Is there a way, Joe, that I guess people could just email me, but perhaps that uh, person who asked that question could email me and I could send that list of schools around the country. Would and that I work? have that person's name and I have their email. So, Tim, I'll make okay. sure that we, we, we make the connection. Okay, okay I will. Uh, to the person who would ask that question, I will promise to get that to you. Um, I just don't have that in front of me right now. We can help you. It's Matt McCullough. Matt McCullough asked that question. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Let's see here. Um, I have one for Mike. Okay. Does your software interface with with multiple sys systems as well as do you use as well? I'm sorry, multiple systems, and it says as we must use one due to state reporting. So, Mike, um, I know the answer. Can you help that help us out with that one? Mike, you've got to get off mute. <laughs> we'll try that one again. All right. Um, short answer is yes. Uh, we interface with just about every sys on the market. How we interface depends on what that sys is. Um, I believe Joe's going to bring up a tab from our website here, our page from our website that talks about this specifically. Um, we say we work with any sys. We work with a lot of them actively. There's a bunch more that we can work with as well. Um, it's usually a pretty simple process where we're going to pull the data you need out of your sys into our system on a nightly basis so that way you're not rebuilding rosters you're not rebuilding students um, all that stuff is just kind of there automatically for you um, as how it would work for your specific sys uh, we could probably talk offline uh, i'm not sure which sys you're using uh, but i can give you some further details as to how that's going to work specifically all right thank you mike i've got another question this one could be a little bit of both of you here can the, can the standards change from report card to report card depending on what has been covered and taught? I don't know if that's a technical question. That comes from Linda Horn or if that's a philosophical question. So why don't we address yeah. both sides? So, so I'll address the technical side. In our system, um, the short answer again is yes. Uh, we have a number of options that you can do. First off, you're going to create a template. That template is going to then, our report card tool will look at the specific student, see what classes that student is in, and then pull the standards from that class onto the report card. And then you have some options when they get there. You can say, you know, I only want to see the ones that are covered, um, you know, only the ones that have specific data. So if you've got 12 kids in a class, you can set it up so that it's even varying student by student because you've assessed it with some students but not with others. And the tool will do that for you based on your settings. Tim, would you have a I, I just the technical add, side? Yeah, I would just add a, um, a brief uh, comment onto that. And, and again, my answer is mostly yes to the question. Uh, in my experience, uh, what I have seen is typically uh, the report card standards don't change from quarter to quarter, but rather um, teachers enter NA into those into the quarter the boxes where that uh, standard just isn't being taught this semester um, so the standards are there but the teachers identify which ones there are no grades for because they either were addressed previously in previous quarters and that score stands or they um, are coming up next quarter or next trimester um, i do know that teachers um, some districts on the report card well, particularly, if it, I guess exclusively at the elementary level, we'll have the same standards in reading, for example, for all the grades, you know, K through five, for example. Um, and the expectations, of course, at grade five are different than they are at grade four, but it's still reading comprehension or it's still um, whatever it might be. Uh, some other districts choose to actually have um, different standards identified on the report card at different levels. So. The general answer is um, yes, you can customize that. Okay. I've got a question here for, for Michael. So this one comes from mm -hmm. Michelle May Magger or Major. Okay. Her district already uses teacher ease. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah. <laughs> using it for grading. And a question is how am I going to transition from f f transition to the standards based learning? So I'm assuming she's doing it with with uh, traditional grading. Yeah. The second part of the question is, can Teacher E support two different report cards in one district? So if you have K through five, and then another one for six through eight mm -hmm. report card. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things there for people who aren't familiar with Teacher E's, just a little bit of background. Um, we do offer both a standards based and a traditional solution. We also offer assist in certain states. Um, 
and you can use the traditional and the standards-based together. So we've seen a lot of schools where some classes are going to be standards-based. Generally, when they're starting out, it'll be like ELA and math, whereas like art and PE might be uh, traditional. So we support that model. Um, on top of that, we support as many different grade cards as you need for the particular setup that you created. Um, so you can do one completely traditional, one completely standards-based. You can do one hybrid where it's got a little bit of both. Um, you could definitely set it up by grade level, as Joe mentioned, you know, K5, 6, 8, um, all of that different stuff. Now, in terms of getting started, if you're already using TeacherE, um, I would encourage you to reach out to our support staff uh, at support at common-goal.com. Um, they're super eager to help getting people that are already using our system set up with standards-based grading. Um, it's a, been a big focus for us for the last couple of years, and so they're they're all well-trained. They're all super excited to kind of help you along that road, um, you know, getting your standards set up and getting your classes configured and things like that. Um, so I would encourage you to reach out. That email again is support at common-goal.com or uh, if you log into the system, go up to the help menu, you can click the support link and get a hold of them there as well. No, that's great. Thank you, Michael. Um, I, I've gone through a number of questions. If if there there's some pricing questions and things like that, just know that we'll reach back out to you when it comes down to that, those kind of fun questions. But I think that's a personal question that we can talk to you about. Um, one of the great things is now you've had a great opportunity to hear Tim talk about you know his practical approach to to standards-based grading. You've seen seen our software. Feel free, we'll reach out to you, but also feel free to reach out to us so you can see how we can take those practical issue, practical needs that you have and make it easy with our Teacher Ease product. So feel free, you've got our contact details and we, we can spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you. Uh, so with that, I don't have any other questions. Tim, do you have any, any final thoughts as, as you've uh, heard people's questions? Um, just that I would encourage people to um, stay the course, take the time they need, take it um, slowly in implementation, don't rush the process. Um, and that what you will find is investigating standards-based grading really pulls onto the table just about every aspect of teaching and learning in the classroom. It is a wonderful vehicle to really examine best practices, not just with classroom assessment and grading, but with instruction and curriculum as well. So um, it's not necessarily an easy journey, but it's um, a very rewarding and productive one. Thank you. Tim. That's it for me. I what, I have one other question. My eyes, as you can see, see, I, I my eyes are probably I'm the older guy here, so I can't see all the questions. There was one question. Tim and I, Tim and I are peers. Um, we the question is, how do I translate my eighth grade grades? into it, it from SBL to to uh, to to a full grade is that correct Mike How, I, I can't see that question terribly well so can you tell can you help answer that question and you got to take yourself off mute Mike one of these days I'll remember that button um, mm -hmm. yeah I saw it in here and I just wanted to make sure we brought it up and covered it because it's a, it's a question that comes up a lot with the schools with whom I work and it's you know you're doing SBL K to eight, the kids transition to high school, the high school wants a single grade. How do you do that? And how do you make that transition? Um, you know, uh, I'll lean on you, Tim, for kind of a, a more of a best practice approach. And then I can talk a little bit about how our system does that. Okay, usually what I recommend to, or demonstrate for teachers, is to identify a final standard score, um, one to four or zero to four, whatever scale you're using, for each of the standards or topics addressed during that grading period. And then because the standards are different, um, they're not all apples, they're apples and oranges and potatoes and whatever, hamburgers, I don't know. Um, because they're not all the same, you probably do need to look at, and, and you're being forced, if you will, to come up with a single grade to pass on to the high school or to the college. Um, then you need to, um, average those, let's say, five topics or standards that were taught and assessed during that grading period and come up with a district or school grading scale 
um, for where's an A, where's a B, where's a C. So if the student's average on the five standards was 2.75, then where does that fall on your grading scale? Oh, we see that's a C. You record a C for eighth grade science or whatever it might be. Now, I don't know about the actual technical side of how it works. That'd be Mike. Yeah, yeah. So we basically we do that in the system. We allow you to do it kind of at the end of term, so it's not something that you have to deal with kind of throughout the whole year. Um, because you know, even our our nine through twelve schools that are using it, we found that there's a bunch of scholarships out there that still want a GPA, and you know, there's a lot of holdover right. from kind of that old way of doing it. And so we do have a, a, a system in place that allows you to do that um, for one of those you know those cases where it's just kind of a necessary evil. Thank you, guys. Thank you both, Tim. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. We appreciate everything. If we didn't get your questions, don't don't worry. We will follow up with you. We've got we've got a record of that information in our system. So I want to thank everybody and have yourself a wonderful day. Cheers, guys. Bye.